from this problem. If you have some suggestions on the way forward. I just wanted to say that Father Kuka's paper is a, an extremely good paper. Uh, he has not done justice to it, but present, the, the presentation has not done justice to it. And uh, most of your questions, if you get the paper and read it, you will find that the, the answers are there. But I also, the reason why I wanted Father to present this paper is because of, he, he makes a very important point that the, the failure of state structures in Nigeria is, 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 is accountable or responsible largely for some of the intelligent violence going on there. And, and security, the corruption in the security services. Even the same in our, our part of Ghana here, the Northern part for instance, when ethnic conflict goes on and impunity sets in, it's, it's just people are not arrested, people are not punished, then people take the law into their hands to take revenge. And that's what is happening. When the state structures collapse, then it's easy to say that these people are violent or these people are this, but the bottom line is the state structure. And I think that's one of the things that he makes very strong in the paper. Well, so, so John is saying, when you get for Lucas uh, <laughs> and paper, all your questions will be answered. But in the meantime, <laughs> yes, I, I actually, this is a bad the middle of the paper, I make the point that. First of all, I don't believe that there's a religious problem in Nigeria in the way Mana is being framed. I've said it over and over, I don't believe there is a conflict between Christians and Muslims. I do believe, however, that as a result of the failure of the architecture of governance, um, all kinds of things, people are adopting all kinds of identities and so on and so forth. But so let me come back to the questions one by one. The first question, uh, which is about um, the role of Islam in South uh, Eastern Nigeria. I believe you're talking about the Muslim population in Afiku. Um, I think it is true to say you know, that the, 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 the Islam is beginning to grow uh, in uh, South Eastern Nigeria. Initially, it was largely a point at the muted point, in the sense that a lot of the people who were Muslims there yeah, were you know, full of is selling their cattle and settling among the Hebrews and so on and so forth. But, there are, there are many reasons to explain the emergence of Islam in, uh, in, in, in Yubo land. But it is still, it's really not at a level which we can, we can say we've begun to make uh, any kind of agitation. Again, because, you know, ethnicity, ethnicity becomes quite important. Because to be an Igbo man uh, and to be uh, a Christian or a Muslim, uh, there are benefits arising from some kind of commonality, you know, some kind of a common identity, identity, almost like what I've said about the Yoruba. Now, if you take the Middle Belt, for example, where if you take a state like Black, where you have about 50, 58 different ethnic groups, different identities, and so on and so forth, um, there are other conversations that are always not necessarily about religion, but they get caught up in that uh, thing. But now, in the case of Asari, the, you know, the Kubo, Asari was calling himself Mujahid and so on, but as you know, uh, it never really resonated because Asari Dokubo was fighting against interests that the, the North had, the North was also interested in. So um, the issue of the, the, the North has benefited tremendously from the oil, from, from the oil wealth. Um, so there was no way that Asari Dokubo could make a point uh, you know, and attract enough interest in the uh, in, in, parts of, uh, of northern Nigeria. Plus, it's become very clear that Asari Kubo was essentially uh, agitating as, as an Ijo person, not, not necessarily as, uh, as, 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 as a Muslim. But and as you can see, it's, got, it's gotten caught up with a lot of other things uh, uh, about the distribution of resources and, and so on and so forth. So I don't think any, any, you know, his, his, his efforts are needed to, to do with religion. But, in Nigeria, if you mention Al Qaeda and so on and so forth, you know, it's enough to generate uh, attention and interest. Um, rather, on, the, on the issue of just, actually, I touched on just, and I think John had made this point. But I found that the, <coughs> me, the discussion about just is so enormous that it also we could end up confusing the symptom for the disease. I think that just is actually a metaphor for looking at the deeper issues. And you really, it's almost impossible to capture those issues. In a short paper like this. However, 
The issues are that somehow, and the point you are making is quite disturbing to me, because the whole idea that we continue to talk about ourselves as Muslims and Christians and Muslims and Christians. Now, if you look at the demographic shifts, let's say across the Kabila River, the, 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 the important thing is that people who have moved from, from, from who are living in a place like Chidowada or, or Kao or, or, or Ngwarimi and so on, uh, they moved from there, but they didn't go to the nearest churches. They went straight to, the, to, to, to look for the house where an Idoma man was a landlord, or an Idala man was a landlord, or a Guru man was a landlord. So, really, I mean, the, 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 the movements have other reasons. And I give you a personal uh, experience. Well, only remotely. My younger sister is, is a seamstress, and her shop, she lived in, uh, in, she lived in Kau. Just, yes, Muslim dominated part of but next, just across the road from where she lived, was an old uh, house of man, a Muslim, who treated her like his own daughter. And my, my, my niece, you know, when my sister had to go anywhere, she would leave her keys with, with, with him. My niece would come back from school and go and collect the keys. And when the first crisis erupted, and as you hear from these conversations, and the Muslims struck, and the, the, the destruction was enormous around that area. But my, my, my sister was, you know, this Muslim, this Alaji sent his children right across and they moved my sister and her daughter and all their property into his house. And then he made them cross the rail to go to the military barracks. And she got, he got his children to escort them. They crossed the rail and went to the military barracks where they took safety. I mean, they, 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 they went in search of, of, of safety. And they were there. Then the quote unquote, the, the Christian youth now went and organized themselves and decided on a reprisal. And in the course of the reprisal, of course, they burnt down the house of Elijah and burnt my sister's property. He said it's absurd. Now, <laughs> I don't know how, you, how, if you narrow these things to Christians and Muslims, it's difficult to explain that. And if you go back to when people begin to reconstruct their lives, after this tornado has passed, they are reconstructing their lives and you find children of a Muslim neighbor helping somebody to rebuild their house because they were neighbors. So at the end of all this, everybody, the victims are always asking themselves, what really happened to us? Now what we are dealing with, we call it, we haven't found an appropriate name for it. But for me, they are riots. Riots are episodes. Anything could stand a riot. And as you notice, we don't, what happens in northern Nigeria, and I've often said to people, don't the Igbos like to say that they are being killed in northern Nigeria? And I say, no, you are not being killed because you are an Igbo man. You are killed because you just happen to have your shop on the road. Because the, the Muslim that has his shop on the road also suffers the same. So uh, the point I'm really making is, although it has become popular and just has even made it worse, that we are presenting ourselves as Christians being persecuted and Muslims being persecuted. The reality is that I often argue that we just, what we are witnessing in just is the collapse of governance. Unfortunately, the Christian community has refused to confront the, 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 the weaknesses of a person like uh, you know, the governor of the state, who since becoming a Pentecostal uh, pastor has further compounded the situation. Um, I think I'd like to leave it at that. If you talk about the relationship, I, I, when we are talking about the deep relationship, I was actually, I thought you were talking about marriage. marriage. <laughs> uh, and if you are talking about marriage, let me even say that. I officiated at the, at, the, at the wedding between a Catholic young lady uh, whom I baptized in Abuja and, uh, and a young Muslim. And his grace is here because he gave me the okay. Uh, so I, 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 the point I'm making is that uh, I don't think it is right for us to say, can we, can you have a, a, a relationship with the Muslim? Because it's, I think it's, it's a frightening question to ask. Unless we reduce this thing to our common humanity and know that we can be unfaithful because we are just unfaithful people, not because we are Christians or Muslims. Uh, we will just be on a, on a spiral and we will never be able to escape. So my real challenge is how do we pull out some of these issues? And I, this is why I'm saying, as you see, with politics coming back, Sooner than later, the enemies of yesterday are all going to begin to complicate because they want to win elections. Um, and the issue of um, what you said, uh, Dr. Turaki, yes, I talked to it in my paper. My own personal experience, I've been, I really thank God because the last 10 years, I've served in four different presidential initiatives. I served at the Truth Commission, 
I served also as a member of the Electoral Reform Committee.